Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And it looks like we definitely came back down to earth after a pretty good start to the season. So if you look at the schedule here in May, two out of three we went down to the Mets. Then we got swept by the Dodgers, then lost three out of four on the road versus the Giants. Remember last year we could not win on the road, and it looks like this year is much of the same. So what's funny is that Desclafani went on the DL for 10 days, and it seemed like it was just another starting pitcher coming out of the rotation, but it looked like it just hurt us. I mean, we just lost the arm out of the uh out of our rotation and we just could not recover it's funny how somebody like that can make such a big difference i mean look at his stats right now 114 with 343 era pretty good if you ask me but i just didn't know that it would make that kind of an impact and it did it definitely did so we're actually going to make a couple changes because let's look at where we're at in the standings here so we're second place in our division now two and a half games back from the mets we're actually three and a half from the wild card so let's look at our stats really quick because one thing i do want to point out is that we are still at the bottom of the league in batting average 24th so we definitely got to make some changes there uh, let's just look at our pitching here let's just look at era and just look to see where we're at there uh so we're still top 10 in era ninth so we're actually not doing bad pitching it's definitely the offense i think that has been pretty much been pretty poor so far so we're gonna make some roster moves and we're gonna start with Jemiah Jones so Jemiah Jones he's still hitting below 200 and I just can't stand to see him struggle some more so I'm actually gonna move him down to double a and especially with the San Diaz being on the DL he broke his finger out one to two months so that's definitely gonna give Jemiah Jones a chance to just you know boost his morale quite a bit because I mean, he's got to get better. He's got to get on a hot streak, and then maybe he'll make it back up to the major leagues. I don't know, because hitting below 200, it's definitely hard to recover from that. Um, and maybe next year, having him up next year will be a fresh start for him. I don't really know. Giant Giovatella actually is hitting 300 from the bench. And one thing about him is that, remember, he hit pretty good last year. Liguri Garcia is one of the guys that surprised us last year. But let's look at Max Kepler. Max Kepler's only hitting 183 in a platoon role. So you know, I actually am thinking about moving him down and getting him some work in the minor leagues because I just don't know about him. Monty Harrison is a guy that I've been thinking about a little bit. He's 67 overall, but here's the thing. He's been hitting pretty good. I mean, he's hitting 300. He has pretty good uh, hitting stats, throwing stats. But I don't want to move him up just yet. I don't want to use any of his service clock. But, you know, Max Kepler is interesting. I don't think he's going to be um, on the Major League roster very long because he is definitely struggling. So one thing I wanted to look at were free agents. So let's look at the free agents that did not get signed in the offseason. Nelson Cruz is one of those guys. Look at his hitting stats. He would definitely be an instant boost in the lineup. He hit 300 last year, but he's demanding 4.6 million. That's a little bit too much for a 38 year old right fielder. Let's keep going down the line. Another guy that I see is Adrian Beltre. And here's the thing, he is only 73 overall. But he hit 278 last year, which is pretty decent. But look at his hitting zones. That's one thing I just depend on. He excels at hitting fastballs. He's dead red, unfazed. I mean, he, he's just a good hitter. And I do like him at third base. The one thing about him is that he's 17 speed. So once he gets on base, I don't know how much of a difference, you know, it would really make. But it, with guys in scoring position, it would definitely help um because let's just look at the stats of some of the other guys later but then another guy that i'm um thinking about here is danny valencia 34 years old has a little bit more speed can play third base and the outfield so this is definitely a guy that i'm looking at he hit 300 last year and the thing i like about danny valencia only wants 1.4 million so i'm actually thinking about going with danny valencia signing him because remember we signed Jung Ho Kong in the offseason. He's only hitting 200 at the AAA level. So we definitely need some help on the offensive end. David Freeze is another guy. He's actually 35, hit 283 last year. So we do need some guys that can help. He's demanding a little bit more than Danny Valencia. So maybe Danny Valencia is the guy we go with. And I think I actually might do this because we do have some money in the bank after having a little bit of a cash flow 
uh our cash flow does drop just a little bit but we can still sign him and, and actually have him in a pretty good role so you know what i'm gonna go ahead and sign him i think this is a good signing for the team 34 years old but he's decent i think 305 he does have a little bit of defensive issues uh you can see that his fielding is only 60 arm strength only 65 but i think having him and then moving starling castro back to second base will help our offense uh, just a, quite a little bit let's just before we do this let's look at brandon drury because this was the guy that i was thinking about you know earlier in the year i was thinking about acquiring him i ended up acquiring him but he is only 26 years old i do still kind of like him um but i do need another spark in the lineup and it does seem like he is happy in his platoon role right now and i'm probably gonna keep him there so i think our outfielders are hitting pretty good right now domingo santana's in 300 lewis Brinson's is actually hitting 250 which is all right larry garcia is hitting 270 uh 269 manny machado came back down 252 but then look at the other guys starling Castro's hitting 300 justin board is back up to 250 now but JT Ramuto struggling. So we just need to get another bat, I think, in the lineup to provide some spark in a platoon role. Platoon role. So I think I'm gonna go with Danny Valencia here. Like I said, he's cheaper. I can only I can sign him for just one year, and I think he's gonna be a pretty good fit. So he wants a longer contract, but let's just see. Let's uh, I mean I don't want to give him more years. So maybe Danny Valencia isn't a good option. Okay, so maybe he signed for 2.2. So still a little bit more than what we were hoping, but we get him on a decent deal. I mean, it's just for one year. We are still, we don't know. We are still rebuilding kind of, but we don't know if we're ready to compete right now because we did, like I said, come back down to earth. Like I said, I mean, we are horrible on the road, but the good thing is we, these next, what is this next seven, eight games, we're, they're all at home. So maybe if we can win six out of eight here, We'd be in pretty good position, get right back in the thick of things. But then we go on the road, play Atlanta. They're barely below 500. The Toronto uh, Blue Jays, they're below 500. Then Philadelphia's below 500. So maybe we can take advantage towards the end of this year, going into June when the draft is, because then we go starting this next uh, month off uh, at home versus the Yankees, who are really, really good. Uh, then we just play pretty much the AL East. So uh, we don't play any like great, great teams coming up except the Colorado Rockies and the Dodgers who are killing it. But we do get them at home and at Boston. So all these, are, the thing is our tough games are at home and kind of the, you know, it might be tough games are on the road. So we'll see how it goes, but hopefully these changes uh, to our MLB roster do make a difference because we don't have any prospects right now that are ready to get moved up and I don't want to rush some of these guys like Lucas Sali is hitting 327 at AAA I mean he is just killing it right now and he's uh, actually progressing really really well uh, Yu Chang, Chang Chang is hitting 257 so no real fielders are ready to be promoted um, and like I said the closest guy here to even being promoted who won't be promoted though is Sali because he's just killing it he, he proves that he can play but he's not going to come up to the MLB level this year probably during the September call-ups but that's probably it so uh let's hop into some action man we kind of got you know some ways to go here we need to get better on the offensive end so hopefully Valencia brings that so let's get into this action Di Sclafani's actually back off the DL so hopefully he provides a much needed spark so let's ha hop into this action let's get it Having Di Sclafani back on the mound is such a big boost for us, especially with our rotation because we've been doing pretty good as far as pitching goes. And look at him. He's got a 114 whip, 343 ERA, 35 strikeouts, 211 walks. I mean, that's really, really good. So here he is facing Boston, looking good early on in this game, getting Bogarts to strike out, getting JD, JD Martinez as well and this is exactly what i was talking about we we're just maybe looking for a spark so early on in this game he is giving us a spark and here back at the plate in the bottom of the second inning here is justin Bohr getting a hit away from the shift and getting into second base with the stand-up double so now two outs in this inning jt ramuto comes up with the chance to bring him in 
and he hits one down the left field line. I don't know. That looked like it was fair to me, but the ump calls it foul, and the next pitch lined out to the center fielder that time, and they get out of the inning. Luckily, Eduardo Rodriguez on the mound for the Red Sox, and here they are back out the, at the plate. Danny Valencia gets his first ground ball as a Miami Marlin. But he cannot throw out the runner on that one. So up comes uh, Bogarts one more time. And he gets a hit up the middle. And that is going to bring in a run. And that's going to be the pitcher in to score on that one. So they take a one nothing lead early on in this game. And there's stu still two outs here. And they're taking this one deep. J.D. Martinez takes it over the wall in right field and that one was into the upper deck he absolutely crushed that one and D. Sclafani looked good in the first couple innings but then gives up a three run inning so on to the bottom half of this inning Lieri Garcia shows off some power and gets that one over the wall for a home run showing some rare power from Leary Garcia. We don't see that very often from him and he shows that he has power. So taking a look at some of the minor leagues here, look at the jumbo shrimp. Brandon Rodriguez's last 10 games is hitting over 600. I mean, that's a nice update for us to get kind of acclimated with our minor league system. Who's doing well? Because sometimes we do lose track because we do keep track of the bigger prospects like Lucas Salee and Aquino and Braxton Garrett, Trevor Rogers, all those big guys, but we kind of get lost with the little guys. Brian uh, Rodriguez is showing off there at the double-A level. Uh, back to the game. Here is Austin Barnes coming up to the plate, and Di Sclafani has just pretty much been getting shelled after that start to the game. And look at Domingo Santana. Can't feel the easy... I don't even know what that was, a Texas leaguer pretty much, and he can't even come up with it. And he's actually been having a little bit of tr struggles in right field, fielding balls. I don't know what it is, but look at the next batter. Comes up on a one-two count. We thought the runner was coming home, and we get straight fooled on that one. So up comes Nunez, but he hits into the double play, so we do get out of the inning. But it is a 5-1 to one deficit here to the Boston Red Sox. But we can't do anything in the bottom half of the frame. So now on to the top of the sixth inning. Here is Domingo Santana in right field. And he cannot field that one off of the wall cleanly. And like I said, he's been having troubles in right field. I don't know what's going on with him out there. So now we bring in Trevor Cahill. And with the first batter he faces, Mitch Moreland takes one deep to right field and that one is into the upper deck to join jd martinez's home run and that's a seven to one lead here at home for the miami marlins this is very uncharacteristic of us but we just cannot get anything going as mookie Betts gets the diving play on that one and manny machado comes up with one out in the bottom of the seventh inning, he can't do anything. I mean, our bats are just not coming through for us this game. On to the eighth inning, Justin Boer striking out on the check swing. And here is JT Remuto getting a hit up the middle, but this one's going to be not through. Uh, Bogarts is going to throw him out at first base. And now on to the ninth inning as Brinson comes up, strikes out. And here's Danny Valencia. For his first game as a Marlin, hasn't gotten a hit so far, but this one's going to be hit hard. But a great stop by Nunez at third base, and that's going to be the game. And they come into our house, and they beat us down. They straight annihilate us. Eduardo Rodriguez only allows two hits. I mean, what a game pitch. I mean, this Miami Marlins offense is just so inconsistent. And we fall to probably one of the best teams in baseball at this point in real life and in the game. So now we're on to a critical situation here. We do uh, get past that series. We move on to the next series. And remember, we got pretty much swept by L.A. in L.A. But now we're back at home. And we want our revenge because, remember, we had that two-hit game 
versus Clayton Kershaw. And here in the bottom of the ninth, we're spoiling the save by Kenley Jansen as JT Arimuto gets the hit up the middle. So there's still no outs in this inning. So we're trying to move him over. Nice bunt that time by Leary Garcia. So now we bring in Johnny Giovatella off the bench, and he cannot do anything with this one. Pops it up to the second baseman. I believe that's Chris Taylor. So now two outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Lewis Brinson gets a hanger, but he's a little too late on that one. That one maybe should have been over the fence. Never hang a ball to a guy that has power like that. So now on to the bottom of the 10th inning. Valencia strikes out swinging on that one. And we actually go to the 11th inning. Remuto strikes out. So we are not scoring any runs in this inning or in this game at that and Leary Garcia shows off a little bit of power, but he can't muscle it. So now we're on to the 12th inning. As Max Kepler comes up, he hits one, and that one sneaks through the infield into the outfield to start out this inning with the hit. But at least our pitching isn't giving up any runs. But our hitting is not helping as Lewis Brinson pops out to center field and Another guy left on base as Domingo Santana comes up and he hits a soft ground ball and they are out of this inning. So now this is the 12th inning. Now we're on to the 13th inning as Rafael Ortega. Maybe he can get us going off the bench, but no, he grounds out to the second baseman and that brings us to the 14th inning. So we have pretty much used all of our bullpen at this point. We are keeping in the same pitcher, Torres, and he gets up to bat here, and he does sacrifice bunt and moves the runner over the Yuri Garcia to second base, but he almost gets caught here, and he gets back into the base. So now Lewis Brinson comes up one more time with a chance to win it, but look at this. The ground ball does not sneak through the infield, so we do decide to quick manage the next inning. And look at this. Corey Seager hits a two-run homer to put the Dodgers up, and we cannot catch a break as Danny Valencia comes up. Now in the 15th inning, grounds out to the third base, and now we got two outs left in this game. Can we pull it off? But Domingo Santana swings at a low fastball that time, so Manny Machado comes up with two outs, and that is not going to be it. We lose at home once again so we are losing these games at home but we do get 12 hits but the results just aren't there I don't know what's up with this team we are just a hundred percent inconsistent I mean we just cannot get a consistent uh string of games going but now we move on to a little bit of some trade talk so Tommy Pham gets traded to the Washington Nationals remember they did get rid of Bryce Harper in the offseason they didn't get rid of him he just signed somewhere else he signed with Baltimore so look at them trying to rebuild stay on top of this division because remember the Mets are in first place right now they are in first place and we're kind of creeping up we're a couple games back at this point but let's just look at a couple of people that are on the trade deadline that trade block that can possibly help us at the deadline so we just saw uh, Michael Fulmer, who's a, a potential 26-year-old pitcher from Detroit. And I think I like him as an option, Julio Tehran. But the, here's the thing. These guys are all going to require a lot of prospects in return more than likely, if not some MLB-ready talent right now. That's the only thing about some of these guys. As we look at Travis Shaw here, I mean, he's everything we want in a third baseman. But... I mean, a lot of these guys on the block, like I said, it's going to require quite a bit. We may need some help in the starting rotation a little bit or in our lineup, but we just cannot afford to pay, get, give up a lot of prospects for these guys. We don't have too many top prospects. I mean, if you think about it, we have Lucas Ali, who I'm definitely not willing to trade. He's probably the most untradeable uh, prospect I have. Then we have a couple of pitchers, Trevor Rogers. And then we only have two in the top 50. We have Trevor Rogers and as well as Howard Armas. So we don't have a lot of players to trade away. So now we move on to an AL matchup, AL-NL matchup, and we're facing Jason Luna. And you remember Jason Luna? He was actually a top five pick in the first year player draft, and he's already at the MLB level. So he's 18 years old, already pitching at the MLB level. So we're going to be looking to 
wreck his first couple of games here up at the MLB level. So now here comes Domingo Santana, guy on second base, 2-2 two -two count, and he gets a pitch to hit, and that one is not coming back. A no-doubt home run for Domingo Santana as he puts us up 2-0 to zero off of the rookie. And what's funny, look at that. Look at Brenton. Look at how he slides across the screen like oh, that. That's a smooth guy right there as Jose Urena comes up. And he's he's going to get the start in this one. And you know what? He's actually having a really, really good year. I mean, 111 whip, a ERA below three. He doesn't have the record right now, but he's definitely been our best pitcher so far. Him and Harleen Garcia are pretty much dominating up to this point. I mean, they are pretty much unhittable, but Jose Arena is definitely probably our best right now. At the bottom of our rotation, he's probably number four right now in our rotation. I kind of switch him between four and three. Sometimes if I have a touch, tough matchup, I might give him the start over somebody like De Scafani or uh, Marco Estrada sometimes. But he's definitely been the surprise of our rotation this year. After struggling last year, being sent down, being sent back up, he's definitely shown that he may have earned a spot in the rotation, he, and he is progressing pretty well. So now Lewis Brinson comes to the play after a leadoff triple, and Leary Garcia gets into a rundown. But look, nobody's covering third base, and we end up getting back to the bag. And... <laughs> We got him on that one. So here Johnny G. Vitella comes up. He gets the start in this game, and he drives one to right field. And Lewis Brinson is going to round second, head to third, and he's going to slide in safe. So Johnny G. Vitella, I love what he brings to the table as Domingo Santana comes up next, and he hits a missile up the middle. And Johnny G. Vitella is being greedy as well. But this throw is not going to be in time. And this is going to be a 4 nothing lead over the Toronto Blue Jays as they do bring in Barucki out of the bullpen. And here's Manny Machado, 1-2 count. He hits an inside pitch, and they're playing pretty deep. And that one actually is going to drop in as Domingo Santana makes his way to third. So now it is... 5-0 to zero with no outs here in the fifth inning. So Justin Bohr comes up, and he hits a missile to center field, but that one's going to be robbed by Kevin Pillar, and that's going to be a double play at second base. We didn't think he would get to that one, and Kevin Pillar pretty much saves two runs, if not three, and here comes Starling Castro to the plate, but he hits a missile up the middle right to Kevin Pillar, but we do get out of that inning with a bunch of run scores. So now we have a five run lead and this is a rare occasion. We usually don't have big leads like this and we usually don't have pitching like this as Jose Arena is now well into the sixth inning and has not given up many hits, hasn't given up any runs and he is just on fire. So now we fast forward to the eighth inning. We do uh, allow two more runs after Jose Arena does get taken out. And Justin Bohr hits an absolute rocket into the sky, and that one's going to be off the wall. If he had faster speed, he's only got 19 speed. That was probably inside the Parker, but he does lead off this inning with a triple, and he's on a seven-game hit streak. And you remember when I was saying that Justin Bohr was only hitting like 219? He is now hitting like 260 now, so he's definitely turned his season around the last few weeks, and now he's on the right track. So it's good to see him on the right track, and hopefully we can get, like I said, Valencia, Drury, and uh, we did send Jamai Jones down, but one of these guys needs to get going. That way we can just get rolling because it seems like everybody is coming around on the offensive end lately. We did have that two-hit game, but it seems like everybody's hitting the ball hard. And that's all I can ask for as a coach, as a GM, that these guys hit the ball hard. If you're not hitting the ball hard, I'm probably not going to play you as we do sneak out of here with the victory. And, I mean, what a game pitched by Jose Arena. I mean, he's just been pitching lights out. And our offense finally gets going consistently. A lot of times we're hitting the ball hard, but they are right at people. They're making diving catches and these amazing, amazing defensive plays. But this game, it does work out for us. As Domingo Santana goes two for five, Jose Arena only gives up 
two hits on the game and he only strikes out four but he pitches a great game and we shell the rookie jason luna and maybe this is a sign of things to come maybe we'll start to turn it around as we get closer to all-star break and closer to the trade deadline so hit subscribe hit that like button you know we're, we're going into draft day and maybe next episode i'm not sure if i'll show draft next episode or the episode after that but we're definitely gonna be looking to get better so you don't want to miss any action stay tuned let's go